This is part eight of our negotiation book, Body Language, and we're going to look at the vocabulary now. So let's jump right into the vocab. The first word is afford. Afford being how much can you spend, how much is the maximum, and this has to do with your resistance point, of course. But the way to say it in English is not resistance point. The way you say it in English is afford. How much can you afford? We can only afford five dollars. So afford is the normal way you would say this uh, resistance point in English. Bit, a small bit. This is a great little word to use. Something small, a little tiny fraction. And it's a, it's a way to make something sound small and not large. So you can say, I just need you to lower the price a bit. Or can you just give me a bit of a discount? It's a great way in speaking to ask for something and it's friendly and positive. Breakdown, breakdown, the breakdown. Here we're using it as a noun. It could be a verb, but here we're gonna use it as a noun. Give me the breakdown, meaning what are the different parts of this situation? And it's very important in negotiation that you take a big problem and you break it into the smaller parts and then in the negotiation, you can ask for that. You say, give me the breakdown. What's the breakdown of this? Decline. Decline meaning heading downward or going down, slowing down, getting smaller. And we can use this in our negotiation to try to convince the other side, our counterpart, that there's something going down. And so we need to think about that in the future. Remember, negotiation is always about the future. You're negotiating something now in order to get something in the future. So if a product you're buying now, if the sales are already declining, they're going to be in decline, it's a decline, then you need to be ready that in the future the price is going to go down too, right? If the demand is going down. So this is, this is something that you can use in your negotiation to bring up to the other side. Demand, uh, what is the demand? It's exactly related to the de to decline. It's a decline. What is the demand? So the demand is in the market, how many consumers are looking to buy something, to buy this specific product. And you use this in your negotiation to, to try to convince the other side that the demand is, is high or low, depending if you're a buyer or a seller. Deteriorate. So a situation will deteriorate, meaning it's getting worse and worse not getting better, not staying the same, actually becoming negative in some way. And you use this in your negotiation, again, to try to get some compromise or get something from your counterpart because you're trying to say that the situation in the future is deteriorating, it's going to deteriorate, it's going to get worse. So again, remember, your negotiation is about the future, so these words are really pointing that out. Discount price. Remember we talked about the list price. Well, this is the discount price. The discount price being lower than the list price. So you're getting something that is lower. You may get a discount because you buy a certain volume or because you're a business buyer rather than a consumer buyer. And you can use this in your negotiation by simply asking, what is the discount price? Or you could say something like, previously I bought from another company and they gave me a much higher discount price. Why can you not give me a 15% discount price? Extraordinary. So extraordinary means something really exceptional. And it can be exceptionally bad or exceptionally good. I suppose extraordinarily bad, extraordinarily good, extraordinary. Uh, usually we try to use it for the positive. And you would use this if you're trying to say how great your product is, how great your company is. It's extraordinary. I'm giving you an extraordinary offer, an extraordinary deal. So I'm giving you something really great. You should appreciate it. Increase, meaning something's getting better, getting stronger, getting larger. And again, for products in a negotiation this, and demand, this would be related to the future. The future demand is going to increase. Margin is, again, I think we've talked about this before, but it was profit margin before. We also can just call it margin. It's the difference between the cost and the price. And usually we would not include things like tax or other things like that. It depends on the, on, on the measurement. But anyway, the margin is 
that difference between the cost and the price. So you can come out in your negotiation and say, this margin is too small or this margin is too tight or we don't have any margin on this. You've got to give us a break. Options are like choices. So some, you have many options, you have many choices, different ways to do things, and we can ask for options. So in the negotiation, we can come right out and ask, is there another option? Can you give me a different option? Or you can just say, I don't like this option. These are great ways to use the word option. Quality standard. This is a nice little phrase, quality standard. Of course, there's two words, very simple. Quality, meaning how good is it? What is its quality? And standard meaning something that's normal or the way that's expected to be. So we use this when we're talking about products because we're often asking what is the quality standard or does it meet the quality standards. Can you meet the EU quality standards? Reliable. Reliable meaning the product will not break or it will last a long time or, or it will do the job it's supposed to do. That's reliable. And we use this in our negotiation because we try to emphasize our product or our service is very reliable. This is one way you try to increase the value of your product by saying it's very reliable. Now, is that true or not true? That depends on the situation, right? But you want to emphasize that. Rock bottom is a great little phrase here. Rock bottom is a way to signal to the counterpart, to the other side, that this is the lowest I can go. So the bottom and rock, meaning rocks on the ground, so you cannot go any lower than the rocks. Rock bottom. It's the same as saying bottom or lowest. Lowest, this is my lowest price. But a great thing is you can say, this is my lowest price. No, really, this is my low, lowest price. And then you, the next time you say, this is my rock bottom price. It's like, really, that's the bottom. I can't go any lower than that. And because in negotiation, we're often doing this thing where you're moving a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, this is a great little word to kind of show your limit. You're at the rock bottom. Sharp. Sharp means, in this case, uh, sudden or very quickly or very clearly changing. So you will use this to show that your product is selling well. It has a sharp increase in demand in the market. Or you could use it against your, comp your counterpart by telling, telling them if they're a seller, oh, there's been a sharp decrease in the demand for your product. Nobody wants to buy it anymore. You have to give me a lower price. So you can use it that way. Steady, meaning it stays even. It's not sharp, it stays even. So if the demand is at 1,000 units per day, it's going to stay about 1,000. It doesn't change too much. This is a way to show that your product has uh, stability. You can say the demand for our product is very steady. So if you make this deal, you will be, you'll be able to make money for the next five years. Very steady demand. So it's very positive. Time out. A timeout is a way to take a break, basically. It's a way to call a break. Now, why is this important in negotiation? Because in a negotiation, once you get started, uh, you may end up in a situation where the other side is pushing you more and more, and it's hard for you to understand what's happening or to think clearly, or you don't know some numbers. So you just say, oh, timeout. I want to take a timeout. I want to take a timeout right now. Can you give me a timeout? I need a timeout. Of course, you could say something like, I need a timeout, I have to go to the bathroom. I need a timeout, I need to go to the men's room. I need a timeout, I need to go to the ladies' room. Or I need a timeout, I need to meet with my team. Or I, we need a timeout because I need to call my manager, something like this. So a timeout is a way to break the negotiation in the middle, and then you can come back. So usually it's to slow things down again because they were too rushed or there was some kind of problem or you forgot something, that happens. Unacceptable. Unacceptable means not acceptable. It is something that cannot be accepted. It is beyond your resistance point, basically. But how do you say that? You don't say it's beyond your resistance point. You just say it's unacceptable. So in this case, you could just say it out to the other side. This is unacceptable. And it could be the whole deal, or it could be just part of the deal is unacceptable. You could just say, Everything is okay except this one piece. The price, unacceptable. That's unacceptable. 
Or you could just say the whole deal is unacceptable. Or you could say your attitude, your behavior is unacceptable. I'm going to leave this negotiation. That would be an extreme case. So usually unacceptable is to, it's kind of like rock bottom in a way, but it's the opposite. It's, it's kind of counter uh, punching the other side saying, I can't do this. This is really not something I can do. So it's, it's a bit extreme. Very, of course we can use very. Your price is very high. Uh, this negotiation has become very difficult. It's very slow and it's an okay word. Uh, unacceptable sounds extreme. Very is just like a little bit, a little bit extra of something. It's not so, such an extreme word or phrase. So, so you can use this in a phrase, I should say, and it's okay, it sounds all right. Very normal to use, very. Your price is very high. Um, uh, our price is very low. Uh, that sounds okay. But if you say, our price is rock bottom, that means it is really low. <laughs> That's it. There's nobody lower than that. It's rock bottom. That is it, rock bottom. Okay, I think that wraps it up for the vocabulary for part eight. Thank you.